Hi friends, this is Susie, your Candy Crush Guru. It is April 16th, 2024, and I am here to talk a bit about All Stars. We are really in it now. We're about halfway through. If you find these videos helpful, I'd ask that you consider liking and subscribing. That really helps me out. All right, so first I want to talk about uh, the cooldown quests. Then I'm going to talk about where I am in the All-Stars event. And then I'm going to talk about where other folks are in the All-Stars event, people who have been doing better than I. I'm going to talk about the future, and I'm going to answer a few questions, although I'm going to give you this caveat right away. I am not an employee of King. When you ask very specific questions, I can only give you my theories based on what I have read and what I have experienced. So if you have a very specific legal question, you have to perform your own due diligence and reach out to King and ask them. I know it's difficult to get them to answer some things, but I don't have those legal bits of information for you. So let's move on. Right now, I have about 17 hours before my next event, and so I'm participating in cooldown quests. One of the questions I've been asked, which I'll address here, is what are we going to have to collect for the next part of the event. Uh, is it going to be striped candies? I think that for all of the knockout events and second chance events, it's going to be these purple stars. I think that when you see collecting stripes, that's going to be for cooldown quests, which are side quests and don't advance you towards the goal of participating in the live final. So I've, you know, collected something and gotten a coconut wheel. If I collect 50 color bombs, I'll get two gumi fish. If I get a thousand stripes, I'll get these um, specials during my cooldown quests. But that doesn't put me on any sort of leaderboard. I don't get anything other than what's shown here. I don't get a ticket to advance to the next stage. So that's that question. And I'm only going to be playing these on the backswing as I'm doing other things. Because I'm going to be getting ready for not the cooldown quest, but the next event. And for me, that next event is the second second chance round. So I participated in the... First of all, I, I made it into a qualifier. And then I forgot to play the first knockout round. Totally missed it. I was a day late and a dollar short. I missed it. That was so frustrating. So then I participated in the second chance one round one, and I made it into the first part of this. Now, this whole thing is all together. It's not, it's not if you make it here, you then get to go into the second chance. You have to make it through both of these rounds. So I made it into the top three spots for the first one, and I barely missed the top spot for the second one. Somebody was just better than I, plowed through it, made it, and made it into the second knockouts, and is currently participating, I hope, and hope doing well. Uh, but I missed this, and I missed this, and so I wasn't able to participate in this, but I'm going to be given a second second chance. Now, some folks think that if I didn't make it into the second through, if I didn't make it into the second knockouts, if I didn't get knocked out here, I won't participate here. But the rules say that people who didn't make it through any of these or who haven't had a chance yet to participate may be invited to participate in the second chance. And as we saw, it looks like the cooldown clock is telling me my next round is coming. So King could change their mind and not invite me. Their rules say they may invite me, but I think that's what's going to happen. So if it does happen, I plan to participate in the second chance round one and round two. If I make it here, I have to make it here in order to get through. I can't just make it here. So that for me starts on the 17th at 9 a.m. Eastern time, which is 7 a.m. my time, and goes for 24 hours. So it ends on the 18th at 7 a.m. Now, those of you who know me know that I don't like to play for 24 hours. I don't have the endurance. I don't have the patience. I don't have the desire. But what I will try to do is remember to wake up in time on the 18th, on Thursday morning, and wake up before 7 and jump in and see if that's enough to get me in. Now you might think, well, why don't you play earlier and get a whole bunch of points and then relax? 
because if I start here, I'm going to be thrown onto a leaderboard with a whole bunch of really competent, really, um, you know, happy, really energetic, really determined people. Okay. And I don't want to, I want to be thrown in with the group of slackers who didn't even play this day. I have to avoid Candy Crush uh, on this profile on this day so that I can be thrown onto a leaderboard with slackers who may not even be wanting to participate in the event. And what happens if uh, it doesn't work the way I think it does and everybody starts here and everybody's thrown into a leaderboard and there are no leaderboards for me or I'm thrown onto a leaderboard with someone who's been playing for 24 hours? Oh well, since I don't intend to get here, I'm willing to take that risk. It's a risk I'm assuming based on my tolerance for, you know, how much time I have to play and my risk aversion. I, I'm fine if I don't make it, so that's okay. If I do make it here, I have to make it in one of the top spots. Here it was just the top three spots. For the second chance, second round, I have to make it into the top spot to be able to participate then right away in the second chance two, round two. And that starts on the 19th and ends on the 20th. And again, if I make it through here, and I don't know if I will, because I have to get into the top spot, but if I make it here, then I have to participate here and I have to make it into the top spot. So that means I'm going to have to wake up again early on a Saturday morning. Will I remember to do that? I'm not sure. But if I do and I make it into the top spot, then I get to participate in the final knockout rounds. We're going to hold off on that for a bit because we're going to talk about those of you who did make it through the qualifier and did make it through the first knockouts or made it into the second chance and are now participating in the second knockouts. You've just got a few hours. This ends tomorrow and it ends tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. Eastern time. For me, that would be 1 a.m. If you live in California or Oregon, that's going to be uh, midnight. Okay, so not really even on the 17th. It's going to end basically on the 16th for you. So you have got just a few more hours to earn whatever you can earn and make it into one of the top three spots. And if you are on that journey, I am applauding you. Sorry about that. I shouldn't have my phone right there, should I? I am applauding you and I am excited for you and I'm hoping that you make it in. Here's the thing. For any of us who do make it to the final knockouts, this is when it gets real. This is when it gets super competitive. Remember that if you make it into this final knockout round, you have to make it into the top spot. None of these top five spots, top three spots, you need to make it into the top spot. And if you make it through round one, remember with the qualifiers, you could make this qualifier or you could make this qualifier and then you're put into the knockouts. Here, you have to participate in this, and then right away you have to participate in, this, participate in this, and then right away you have to participate in this. And you have to be in the top spot for each of these. It's not, I made it through the final knockouts, round one, I'm in the live final. No. If you make it through round one, you have to go to round two to participate in order to try to get here. And even if you make this, you have to participate in round three and be in the very top spot. And what happens is we are now put into groups of more competitive people. The only people who are making it into the final knockouts are either people who have made it into the top three spots here, just like us, or into the top spots in two rounds of second chance. <sighs> highly, highly competitive. Also, this thing about starting late and being put in to a, you know, a slackers category, I'm not so sure it would work out well for me. I think that it's going to operate in the finals differently to how it operates here. And I even think this is a gamble, you know, doing it during the, the second chance rounds. I think it's a gamble there. And so it's certainly a gamble here. <sighs> but if, 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 I had the chance to make it into the final knockouts round one. I would still be a slacker. <laughs> Guess that's how I operate. I would be a slacker. I would wait and see if I can jump in and see if, you know, they might have these leaderboards established already. 
And, uh, you know, so I might not make it onto a leaderboard or I may make it onto a leaderboard of people who've been playing for several days. That's a risk I'm willing to take. If you're really setting your sights here, you might not be willing to take that risk. Uh, and certainly, like, let's say I, I really wanted to get here, but I just didn't have the time and I was a slacker here and then I was a slacker here for this second round. Once I got to the final knockout round, I would just plan to try to stay awake as long as I could for these 24 hours and play. The problem with that is it's not really good for your health. It's not good for your mental health or your physical health. It's not good to be sitting that long, even though I have a sit-stand desk where I can elevate my desk and stand up for a while. It's not good to be staring at a screen for 24 hours. And I have the feeling that's what is going to be required to get into a top spot to make it into Los Angeles. I also think that uh, you know, you could say, well, I'll still take my chances and, and go for the last hour. Here's the thing. I think by the time you get to the final knockouts, there are only going to be 10 leaderboards. It may be 10 leaderboards with, you know, 20,000 people on it, on each one, if they need to do it that way. But I think there are only going to be 10 leaderboards because we're told that it's the person who secures the top spot on each of the leaderboards who gets to travel and they're only going to have 10 people traveling. So that is my impression of, of what will happen. These are going to be brutal and progressively more brutal. Even though this one is longer, you're still competing with people who uh, are, you know, have, have done well. You're not competing against people who got the top spot in the first, final knockout round one whereas you will be here. So it just becomes more and more competitive as we go. All right, now that's what I know about the events and or what I think about the events. Those are my impressions. Now, I have gotten a lot of questions about what exactly is going to happen. First of all, I went through the rules, and if you need to look at the rules, uh, I've got a whole video about that, or you can just look up, you know, you can put in your search engine Candy Crush All-Stars 2024 Terms and Conditions. Probably you'll just be able to get it with Candy Crush Terms and Conditions. But you can look up all of the rules, all of the legalese, and answer these questions for yourselves or you know, consult with an attorney. Someone asked me about residency. Living in Canada for over eight months as a student, Canada is a participatory country but I'm assuming the person's uh, country of origin is not. Would that person be qualified if making it through all of the rounds to participate? I don't know. Because King says you need to have residency for six months. So it sounds like it. However, what if residency doesn't just mean living there? What if there's some legal residency that needs to be proved? I'm not sure. I'm not an attorney. I'm not king. So you need to consult with king directly if you have very specific questions. I can tell you, tell you their general guideline is you need to have residency for six months. I can't tell you what they consider residency. In the same way, visas and passports. They say that all of your travel papers, your visa and your passport, has to have been valid for six months prior to June which means that by the time this event started, you didn't really have enough time to do that. So if you don't have a visa yet, will you be able to participate? My impression is no, because it has to have been valid for six months, but I'm not king. Maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong, or maybe they have exceptions. And so you need to consult with King if this is one of your questions. I don't want you to not participate because you think I told you you can't do it and then miss out on, you know, your chance of winning part of a million dollar prize pool and the experience to be in Los Angeles. I don't want that to happen to you. So you need to perform due diligence. One of the biggest questions I get revolves around what happens in LA. So for those lucky 10, lucky, those diligent 10 people who make it through, King is going to provide a trip to LA for you and a guest. Now, I don't know exactly what they're going to include and what they're not. 
I can tell you that it wasn't a prize. It was for a TV appearance um, from another company. And, and this seemed to be pretty standard for what they do in Hollywood for people who are appearing on a show. But this is just my situation, a very specific thing that happened. And I'll, I'll explain what happened uh, to me. Um, to me, it sounds like it was an awful experience. It wasn't my favorite, I'll, I'll be honest, but it wasn't an awful experience. There was a lot of excitement and fun. So what happened is they told me that they would uh, provide me travel to LA. And they didn't pick the airport that was, you know, 15 minutes drive. They picked the one that was a, an hour and 30 minutes away. They didn't provide me ground transportation to the airport, but they did say they would reimburse me for gas if I submitted the receipts. Uh, King might provide ground transportation for you. Uh, what, what this other company did for me is they booked everything. They booked my travel and sent me emails. Once I got to the airport, I had my boarding pass. I was able to, you know, board the plane. If I wanted anything like a, a water or a snack at the airport, of course, that was my own expense. But I got on the plane. I landed in LA. They coordinated and provided ground transportation for me. I texted them as soon as I got in. Uh, they texted back and told me exactly where to go. There was somebody holding up a sign like you see. I went to that person and got in the SUV and they took me from there to the hotel. And I didn't have to pay. I didn't have to tip. It was all, you know, part of the experience. I think I was even told, do not tip. This is, you know, they've already been tipped on my behalf. So, um, so I get to the hotel. I had to check in. Now I did have to give them a credit card because if I had extraneous expenses, if I wanted to, you know, live it up and, and order Dom Perignon for everybody, uh, they needed to be able to charge me. But the hotel itself was paid for. Also, what this company did is they gave me a per diem. And it, for those of you who haven't traveled before on a company's dime or something like that, and don't understand how per diem works, they have a set amount of money that you're allowed to spend for meals every day. Now, is King going to do this or are they just going to feed you? Or are they just going to provide food? I don't know. But my experience is I got a per diem. So let's say they allow you to spend $25 for lunch. Uh, first of all, the prices in LA, so expensive. When I looked at what the per diem was, I can't remember because I don't remember, you know, amounts. But when they told me what the per diem was, I thought, oh, well, that's no problem. And the, it became a problem, especially because they told me that I had to use the per diem in the hotel. And that makes sense because then it can just be charged directly to the room. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's no submitting receipts and things like that. Plus they probably get a deal from the hotel. You know, they'll give you the rooms for cheap if, if you buy all of your meals there, you know, it's, it's, they work it out as a package. So for me, that's what happened. Will that be the way King handles things? I don't know. But for me, I had to eat in the hotel. The meals were hugely expensive. Let's say, let's say they gave me $30 for lunch. Uh, so if I spent $35 for lunch, I would be responsible for that $5. That's why they're holding my credit card. So they can charge me for any extraneous charges. Uh, let's say I only spent $25 on lunch. I wouldn't get $5 back. I think what they did for me, actually, is they gave me not a meal per diem. That's how I've traveled before for companies. They've given me a meal per diem. But I think here they gave me a daily per diem. I could spend X amount on meals. Um, I was also told that the prices had gone up and the the per diem hadn't been change to reflect that. So I wasn't supposed to worry about what happened if I went over my meal allowance. It was okay. As long as it was within reason, it was okay. 
and we did end up going over our per diem. They tried to charge me when I checked out. I said, no, 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 it's it's all booked to to this. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. Let me just make a call. They made a call and they took care of everything. So a few little bumps that you have to experience when you're going through travel, but just remain cool and calm and collected and, and try to get, you know, everything resolved. That's what happened for me. Then they flew me out early, several days early, about two or three days early, because they wanted to make sure I didn't have any problems with my travel and I wasn't going to miss the filming date. And so I got the opportunity to just kind of roam around Los Angeles. I will tell you, Los Angeles can be a scary place. Uh, they have a, a, an issue with homelessness and they have an issue with crime rates rising. And sometimes there are scary people on the streets. Thankfully, I have a very sweet, adorable, wonderful nephew who's a musician and lives in L.A. and lived just like six blocks from where I was staying. And so he took me and my friend around and, and you know, brought us to the uh, Hollywood sign. And when we were walking down the street, he stood in front of us. He walked a few paces ahead of us with his big broad shoulders and his chest out so that when there were crazy people shouting obscenities at us and threatening to kill us and threatening to kill themselves, he he stood in the way. He was familiar with this. But it, it can be scary. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that King maybe has some coordinated tours for people who get there. Uh, the company that I was with, they they did to some degree, but I didn't get to participate because of the timing of things. Uh, but that is a possibility that maybe you'll go as a group to watch a TV show being produced or the back lot of one of the movie studios or something like that. So I don't know. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful they'll have events for you and little parties and get togethers and things like that so you can meet. But I'm not king. I don't know. I'm not coordinating this. Oh, man, that's what I want to do. I want to coordinate this for all of the winners. That would be so fun. I'd make sure everybody had a great time. And I hope King does that too. All right. Um, and then, so they, they paid for my hotel. They paid for my meals. They paid for my transportation for places where I needed to go. So when it was time for me to go to the studio for filming, they provided the ground transportation. I didn't have to worry about it. Just had to meet the person at the designated time. And then they got me from the studio uh, to the airport because I had to uh, flight right after that. So that was my experience. Then I got home and I had to pay or I had to, you know, drive myself back from the airport. <sighs> I hope that this information is valuable to show what the experience can be. It was really a wonderful, wild time. Little scary adventures usually are, but really uh, fun at the same time, especially, you know, hanging out with my nephew. So... If you have specific questions and you make it to L.A., the time to ask those specific questions will be when they start coordinating things with you, when you're signing all of these non-disclosure agreements. Because we might not be able to hear what your experience was. You might not be able to tell us. Uh, but um, this is the time to ask when, you know, after you make it through here and they contact you and say, hey, you're a winner and we want to send you and a, a friend and are you available from June 20th to June 20, June 10th to June 22nd? You say yes. And then they tell you, well, actually, we're going to fly everybody out on the 14th. And, you know, I mean, I don't know, but they'll they'll coordinate everything with you and tell you exactly the dates that you're supposed to be traveling. And then you ask questions. What hotel are we staying at? What what am I supposed to wear? Is there going to be hair and makeup? They told me, you want to arrive at the studio with your hair and makeup done. And I had to tell them, I don't wear makeup. I can have my hair done. But if I have it done and we don't go on film right away, it will fall. So uh, they worked with me and said, okay, now we'll get you a, a makeup artist. And, you know, so it was, it was a, an interesting experience. And, uh, and they, you know, they got me flowers and things like that. So there were other little perks there that were fun and exciting. And I hope that's the same for you. But this is the time to ask, what, what will happen? 
uh, because they're the ones who are coordinating everything and they'll be able to best answer you. All right, I think that's it for me. If you have questions, I'm happy to, to contemplate them for you and give you my theories. If I know the information, I'll try to give you specific uh, answers based on what King has said, but this is King's show. So I'm just excited. I hope that those of you who are participating right now, uh, you know, you get there, you get there, you get there, you get there. I, I'm so looking forward to, to cheering everyone on. Just be really prepared to work aggressively in these final rounds. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye.